Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try Hello, Quail Studios Guitar, Hal Stead here. I'm going to talk today about John Lennon's Imagine. We did a video on, uh, well I did a performance video on this, I did a guitar lesson video. You can find both of those at the end of this video. There's links, you know, that it'll pop up and you can click on them. What does Imagine, what does that song mean to me? What does it mean to other people? This is a good question because I know people that hate this song and I know people that love this song. And I've had requests for this song when I've played in public. Imagine there is no heaven, it's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. That's kind of like a, uh, that's like a, an atheist's view of the world, right? Imagine all the people living for today, just living for today, you know, not worried about the future, not worried about what's going to happen next, just, you know, living for today. Okay, imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for, no religion to. That's interesting, that no religion to part. Um, nothing to kill for, that's really, that's really a nice thought, you know. No countries, if we didn't have different countries, why would we fight amongst ourselves, uh, you know, and no religion. Some people kill for religion. There was like, you know, we, we believe that we're the righteous people and we're going to kill you because you're not believing that or you're the heretics and so we're going to get rid of you and for some reason that's, you know, supposed to be righteous, but I don't believe it is. You may say I'm a dreamer, Let's see. but I'm not the only one. Now this is really, there's a lot of truth in this song and um, there's a lot of people that believe in world peace, right? I believe in world peace. I believe that we could have world peace if we'd live together and uh, not fight amongst each other. Uh, I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. And I think that will happen someday. Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. That's an interesting thing, you know, no possessions. Like, uh, you know, is this my guitar? Is this your guitar? Whose guitar is it? Um, We'll talk about that in a little bit, but if there's no possessions, let's see, no need for greed or hunger. Greed, no need for greed. That, um, you know, if nobody has any possessions, then I'm not greedy for your possessions. That's, I guess that's the idea. No need for hunger, a brotherhood of man. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. That's, this is really, these are lofty ideals, don't you think? Now. I believe that the socialists, they say, okay, you know, we're going to, they do it through government and they say, okay, we're going to take, you know, half of your money and we're going to redistribute it or we're going to take all of your money and redistribute it so that everybody's equal, right? Equal in what? Equal in material things? Well, I know people that can't handle material things. I mean, I know people that uh, are rich, that have a big house, that have a lot of land and that manage it very well. I know people that have a little house, that rent, that manage it terribly. Um, and what I mean is, um, like, their house is horrible, uh, it's dirty, it's cluttered, it's like junk everywhere, stacked. I mean, I've, I've been in people's houses where, like, there's a pathway to get from here to there, and stuff is just stacked up everywhere, and there's no place to sit. And there's cats and dogs and hair and fleas and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and it's like, it's not clean. Uh, well, some people have comfort in that, I think. <laughs> or maybe they grew up that way. Maybe they're lazy. I don't know. Uh, now, my mother, she was like this clean freak, right? When she got older, you know, like in her 60s, 70s, she's like, you know, I don't, I don't keep my house nearly as clean as what I used to. Well, I used to really clean a lot, you know, and you'd walk into her house and you'd look everywhere and it looked like spotless. And you'd be thinking to yourself, if this is her being lazy, what was her being clean? <laughs> right? And so, uh, I've never actually heard anybody complain about a clean house or a clean bathroom or a clean toilet. I've never heard anybody say, oh, that place is so clean, it makes me sick. You know, it's, I've never heard anybody say that. Never. Ever. 
but I have heard people say, you know, this place is terrible. So when you talk about people managing stuff, people being able to care for things, um, there are levels, different levels of comfort that people have. Clean, cleanliness, comfort, people being able to take care of themselves, people being able to uh, uh, manage money or not manage money. There's rich people out there, there's poor people out there, there's people who gamble that throw all their money away, uh, there are people who, um, well anyway, you, we can go and talk about all these different scenarios, right? The truth is, no one is equal. No one uh, has like the corner on the market of, of being the same. We, we're not the same. Um, we're not the same height, we're not the same weight, we're not the same because we speak differently. Some people care about speaking properly, some people don't. Some people uh, have heavy accents and some people have, I mean, I have an accent, right? What is my accent? You know, if I was from you know, Britain, then I would have a different accent, right? My father was from Britain and my father was from Pudsey, near Leeds, Yorkshire, England, right? I heard a <laughs> fellow say one time, you can always tell a Yorkshireman, but you can't tell him much. <laughs> and I told that one to my father. He didn't like it very much. Um, let's see. So, uh, my take on this, imagine there's no heaven, it's easy if you try, no hell below us, above us only sky. I, I believe actually, I believe in God, uh, in a heaven and hell, so to speak. I mean, if you're not happy and you're fighting all the time, that's hell, right? Heaven is when you're not fighting all the time and when everything is going really well. Now, in this life, we live in a fallen world and so, Things don't always go really well. I, if you've been following my, my videos, you know that I broke my wrist. Uh, that's what we say in English. In Spanish, they say something like, uh, se quebró la muñeca, meaning the wrist broke. <laughs> they don't take you know, possession of that. In English, we do, I broke my wrist. In fact, it was right behind me. I was on a ladder and the ladder collapsed and uh, my wrist was broken and I had it in a cast for six weeks and now I'm doing uh, physical therapy. In fact, I've got to go to physical therapy and. What time is it? I don't know what time it is. In uh, less than two hours. Okay, so I've got to hurry up with this. Um, no hell below. You know, when we watch movies like Star Wars, you know, the first one about Luke Skywalker and, and Darth Vader, there's a struggle between good and evil. And evil is portrayed this way and good is over here. Lately, um, movies, the good and evil is not so, like, is that person really good or is that person really evil? I guess it's the one you're, whatever side you're on, then that's good and evil, right? If you like that side, that's the good side. And if you don't like the side, that's the evil side. But where's the morality in it? We need morality. We need some, we need the definition of good and evil in our lives. Um, if there's no heaven and there's no hell, then, you know, you, you just, there's no accountability, right? Okay, some people believe that there's no God. I'm sorry, I don't believe there's no God. We could talk about that later um, and we could get into that. Imagine there's no countries, it isn't hard to do. I can imagine that. Uh, nothing to kill or die for. You know, people kill for a religion, people kill for the countries. You know, I'm right, you're wrong, that kind of thing. I want to take you over. Uh, there are definitely evil people in the world that want your stuff. And, you know, people that want to take your stuff. I don't think that's right. I think that we should, like, if someone came in here and today I'd say, hey, I don't have a guitar, let me have your guitar. Well, wait a minute. Uh, this is in my possession. It's not necessarily mine. Now, you know, when it says, imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. Um, some people view their possessions as not really being their possessions. Like, I have this guitar and I have stewardship over this guitar. But it's not really my guitar, because if I die tomorrow, I leave it here in, on the earth. So it's really not my guitar. But God has given me stewardship over this guitar, and so I'm going to take care of it. And as long as I have stewardship, then, uh, you know, it, it's not really mine, but I have possession, I guess you could say. And everybody has stewardship over something. 
If you could just walk in and take somebody's shoes or take somebody's clothes or take somebody's guitar or, or take somebody's whatever it is that, that they've accumulated. I did buy this guitar on discount because uh, I bought it from a guy who was closing a, a shop and he gave it to me for like half price, half of retail. Uh, stick with me here because I'm getting to the real point of what I believe about how we can get to utopia. All right, I'll just get right to it. This is how we get to utopia. Um, we have stewardship over certain things in this life, right? We don't really possess them. But we say, you know, this is my guitar, or this is my house, or this is my car, or whatever. But it's really not ours. Because we are going to pass through this life. And uh, then we're going to move on to the next life. And some people don't believe in that either. But you know what? If you, uh, if you contemplate it in a quiet place, you realize that there is. I've had uh, experiences where... Um, my grandfather saw people and talked with people before he died, one week before he died, and they told him, you're going to die in a week. I want you to know that there is more than just this life. Now, as far as socialism goes, I don't like socialism. I mean, I, at all, right? Because I don't think that you should be able to take my stuff and then redistribute it. I don't think that the government should be able to take whatever I have possession of, whatever I have stewardship over, and redistribute it, but I need to go out and I need to take care of my neighbor. I need to take care of people in my community, people that are around me. And when I see poverty, I help them. I can cl help clothe them, I can help shelter them, I can help feed them. And uh, there's instances in the scriptures, like say in the Bible and in the Book of Mormon, where it says that they had all things in common and that there were no poor among them. There's one in Acts where it talks about that, uh, the community of Christ the, after Jesus was resurrected. Um, that community had, you know, uh, no poor among them, and they had all things in common. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that they took everything, like forcibly was taken away from them, and then it was redistributed. It means that they voluntarily gave of whatever they had to help people that didn't have, or that were incapable, or that didn't have the education, or that didn't have the understanding to take care of it, or didn't have the capacity. I mean, when you have people that are Down syndrome people that don't have the capacity to take care of themselves, or autistic people that don't have the capacity, or the, the drive, or the understanding how to take care of themselves, you have to take care of them. But you have to do that in a in a situation where it's voluntary, you can't do that forcibly. That's the devil's way. That's my view. He's like, you know, hey, I want everybody to be righteous, and so I'm going to force you to do that. And we can talk about that later. But, you know, God's way is to, I want everybody to be righteous, but I'm not going to force you. And you're going to have this opposition in your life. And the opposition is going to make you stronger. And you're going to have to have faith also that I'm going to take care of you and heal you from problems that are going to come up. And that's where the power comes from. Um, anyway, uh, this is my take. Now, this isn't on my regular channel, my uh, Quail Studios guitar channel, but it's on, uh, on my vlogging channel. It's on my, my podcast channel, right? Okay, so thanks for being here. Thanks for, for helping, you know. <coughs> Go see, go see my video. Okay, I don't know what you might think. In the comments below, tell me what you think. And uh, if you don't like the idea of voluntarily, I mean, if we didn't have any uh, welfare system, if we didn't have any healthcare system, if we didn't have any of those kinds of government systems, what would happen? Well, we would have more money, and we'd be able to distribute that money the way we see fit. That is true charity. That is true socialism. It's, I mean, that's the true socialism. That's the true taking care of people, not through forced socialism through government. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. You can make comments below. You can think I'm crazy if you want. Um, but have you ever tried it? We do it in our family all the time. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Above us only sky 
imagine all the people living life in peace. Imagine.